What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who legit took offense to a segment. WWE creative and Vince McMahon have been known to uh, come up with some very interesting, sometimes cringe and and or some would say a little bit disrespectful segments. And not only do the viewers may take offense to it, sometimes the wrestlers involved in the segment and backstage talent may take offense to it. So we're gonna check it out. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K, feels cool to say that. And uh, let's get right into it. Now it's not just fans who sometimes get offended by segments that are seen on WWE television. Mm -hmm. Sometimes actual wrestlers can come forward and admit that a segment personally offended them in a certain manner. I know. Well, which wrestlers were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who took personal offense to a segment. Be sure to subscribe and hit subscribe that notification bell for daily man. wrestling they, videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive cool lists. Number 10, key WWE superstars, the Jason Sensation segment. Now, for those not familiar with Jason Sensation, he's mostly known for doing an impression of Owen Hart on Raw in 1998. The impression, according to Sensation himself, offended a number of key WWE superstars so much so that Sensation would be released from his WWE contract. The main issue seemed to be that Sensation also did a number of impressions of different WWE superstars and eventually it began to rub superstars the wrong way and some viewed it as Sensation taking the spotlight away from them. Mm. Whilst appearing on the two-man power trip podcast, Sensation revealed, As time went on, what I did started to work against me and it did start to rub some of the boys the wrong way. Some of the boys went behind my back and kibosh my hosting job. It sucked. Ew. I lost that hosting gig because too many guys complained about using their gimmicks. Number 9, Randy Ew. Orton on the Eddie Guerrero Didn't promo. I know that. And one of the more controversial storylines WWE has ever done is their inclusion of the late great Eddie Guerrero's name in the Rey Mysterio vs. Randy Orton feud all the way back in 2006. Which what? was a fantastic feud. Orton would make a number of distasteful... In the sense of the wrestling. Like, the wrestling was top-notch comments in relation to eddie in the promo including one where he stated that eddie was in hell yeah i did remember that i was like oh whoa that's a uh, that that goes a little bit too extreme bro that was whoo that was a uh, an interesting time a number of wwe talents felt that the segment was completely out of place and eddie's name should not be mentioned in this way no. eddie had only passed away just a few months prior to the wwe performing the segment but they couldn't resist using his name in any way they could one superstar who took offense to the segment was actually orton himself in recent years he's been open about the fact that he didn't like or want to do the segment however he has stated that mysterio convinced him that eddie would have been fine with it so orton decided to proceed with caution Number eight, Stephanie. Wow. And I, I'm pretty sure Eddie would have been okay with that, man. But, you know, I, I get how some people would feel like, yo, that he just passed not too long ago. I think that's a little bit, we shouldn't even go that far. You know what I'm saying? So. Stephanie McMahon, the Dusty Road segment. Mm. A Stephanie McMahon made a career of humiliating talents in promos. This Therefore, is when wrestling icon Dusty Rhodes went off script during a promo exchange in 2013, Stephanie wasn't just offended, she was furious. In fact, Stephanie was so offended that she outright refused to do any more segments with Dusty and being in the position she was in, she had a wish granted. Now, the reason for Stephanie's outrage was because during a promo segment between her, Triple H and the Rhodes family, Dusty put his hand right in Stephanie's face so she couldn't talk. Stephanie believed that this made her look weak, but fans simply saw it as Dusty putting the billion dollar princess in her place. Mm -hmm. Number seven. De yeah, I wouldn't take too much offense to that. That was... Her gimmick is, you know, being pretty much like this billion dollar rich brat, you know what I'm saying? So I I, I, I get it, but I mean, that was the whole point. Dusty's like, I don't care who you are, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and John Cena segment. Mm. A Talking Smack has always been a show where talent can speak freely without yep. being forced to go in a certain direction by a promo script. Miz's Talking Smack segment was one of the best things that year for sure this was certainly the case back in 2016 when smackdown mm -hmm. general manager daniel bryan revealed that he was offended by a segment between aj styles and john cena on smackdown in that segment cena stated that if he got fired from wwe he wouldn't go to wrestle anywhere else because he only loves wwe this deeply offended bryan who went on a mini rant in relation to cena's comments and stated i was actually taken aback and borderline offended by john cena saying hey if this doesn't work out for you you'll go somewhere else to wrestle 
and he would say, I only want to wrestle in WWE. It offends me because, hey, guess what? I've been fired from WWE twice. Mm. Sometimes when you get fired, you have to go wrestle somewhere else. John saying essentially that if he were to get fired, he wouldn't go wrestle anywhere else because he only loves wrestling in WWE. Number 6, mm. Chris Jericho, Triple H's promo. In 2013, Triple H cut a rather controversial promo directed at Daniel Bryan. In the promo, Triple H would badmouth Rob Van Dam, Chris Jericho, and Edge. He stated that they were never the number one guy in the WWE. I do remember this. I do remember this. He he, he kind of really goes at these these guys that he never really felt like were A-plus players. And he even stated that if any of them were the face of WWE during the Attitude Era, WWE would be out of business. Jericho, who remains one of the most decorated stars in uh -huh. WWE history, would tweet a response to Triple H saying, Thing is, Triple H, despite your major push, you never were either. Yeah. Good luck in your future endeavors. Fans were firmly on the side of Jericho. Facts. Well, Triple H was cool. Let's, let's, I'm not going to discredit what Triple H was, but... We know he wasn't the face of WWE, WWF back then. He just wasn't. You want to know why he wasn't? Because there was a guy that goes by Stone Cold. There was a guy that went by The Rock that were way, and I mean leagues of head of being over. Triple H worked as a counteract, a counterpiece to them. But he was never just the face of those comp of the brand. He wasn't. There was a lot of over talent too, but we knew who was one, one A, one B respectively. You can choose back then. And Triple H wasn't it. And I like Triple H back then from time to time, but we know who was the top dogs. Jericho, who had every right to be upset in relation to Triple H's rather brutal and unfair comment. Number five, Mickey James, the Alexa Bliss promo. A WWE decided to build a Mickey James vs. Alexa Bliss feud in 2017 around Mickey's age. This was a lazily booked decision from WWE, especially because it made little sense as Mickey hadn't even turned 40 when the story was taking place. But one segment which offended Mickey on a personal level was when she was given a walker as a gift. This was to imply that she was too old to be wrestling. While yeah. speaking to Chris Van Vliet, Mickey would discuss how hurt she was by the segment and stated, I can never wrap my head around and find it funny that I'm given a walker on Raw in 2017. Yeah. It's bullshit and it's not funny. I was offended and I said that I was offended. But I'm a professional and as a pro you go, fine, and let's see what happens. Nine times out of ten I was right, but it's already happened. I had to do it just to prove a point. I feel like you should trust me enough at this point to know I'm not an idiot. Mm. I'm looking at it through the lens of our audience and where they're at now. Number four, the big show Randy. Yeah, she she could still go in the ring, so I, I at that time, like I don't I don't you know how WWE is. They they're they are sometimes they're not as uh I guess you can say spot on with the directions of where they want to take their wrestlers and their character the characters of their wrestlers and that one's just like come on bro mickey mickey james can still go she's not even 40 yet like what are you doing do you want backstage segment the segment involving the Big Show and Randy Orton at the start of 2021 offended the Big Show so much that he decided to leave the WWE and sign with the competition AEW. In this Damn. infamous segment, Orton would verbally run down the Big Show and at one stage he even put his hands over the Big Show's throat. The issue was that Big Show virtually had no reaction. It made the former WWE star look extremely weak and Big Show was quite rightly offended about how the segment made him look. Number 3, Damn. Sonya Deville, the Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch title exchange. Yeah, I'm sorry. A grown man put a man, grown man put his hand on my throat. Like, bro, we we going at it, and it's the big show. So, I'm just saying. In segment in October of 2021, WWE oh, produced this what one. would become one of the most talked about segments of 2021. Yep. They were presented a championship exchange between Becky yep. Lynch, who was a SmackDown winner. Once again, I don't think championship exchanges should be a thing. I think either they should lose it or fight for the titles some way to get the titles off them. But championship exchanges, like, what the fuck is this? Trading cards, bro? I was champion, and Charlotte Flair, who was the Raw Women's Champion. The issue was that Charlotte had a lot of issues with the segment, so much so that she went off script in the yep. segment and threw her title right to the ground. Notably, Becky was furious with Charlotte after the segment, and she even got into a heated verbal exchange backstage after the segment had taken place. Members of WWE management and Becky herself believed that Charlotte was trying to make her look bad with her unprofessional and selfish behavior. Yeah. But Sonya Deville, who was overseeing the segment, also took exception to Charlotte's conduct. 
According to reports, Sonia was so offended into relation to how Charlotte acted, she was ready to fight Charlotte backstage for real. Damn. Number two, Dean Ambrose, the Roman Reigns cancer mention. When Roman Reigns announced that his leukemia had returned after 11 years, fans had hoped that Reigns' illness wouldn't be used for a storyline. Yeah. Sadly, they were wrong, and WWE yep. decided to use his illness to further a storyline between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, who happened to be two of Reigns' closest friends in the WWE. In the build to the Rollins and Ambrose match at the 2018 TLC pay-per-view, Ambrose would cut a promo on Raw to promote the match, and he would make a number of comments regarding Reigns, including stating that his cancer return was karma. It would surface he Yeah, he... he I remember those comments, and I was like, I get it. It was, it was definitely like, holy shit, they went there. But at the same time, that's, it's like, I don't know, man. I think that should have been a little bit off limits because, you know, there's, some, there's someone's live that you know we're talking about here. But I get it. Sometimes they want to get a little edgy to bring in more realism to the story. Sometimes it works. Sometimes people take offense to it and feel like it's, it's, you know, it, it, it do, it's not needed to enhance a feud. Years later, that Ambrose was not just offended, but sickened by WWE asking him to mention Reigns in this capacity. Rollins also had a similar viewpoint, and he felt like the feud between himself and Ambrose was in bad taste and didn't need to unfold the way it did. And number one, Ric Flair on the Page and Charlotte Flair segment. A WWE went too far when they decided to include Reed Flair's name in a contract signing segment between Page and Charlotte Flair. Their segment took place back in 2015, and Paige would deliver the line, Your little baby brother. He didn't have much fight in him, did he? Reed Flair was oh. Charlotte's younger brother, and he sadly passed away in 2013 Gee. following an overdose. This line quite rightly offended all members of the Flair family, including the legendary Ric Flair. Rick was rather public in the fact that he wasn't Damn. happy with WWE for using his son's name in this disgusting manner. Was... Flair even added that they didn't even ask his permission to name drop his son in the segment itself. That's... He yeah. stated, I never heard a word about it. I started crying when I was watching. No, nobody called me and no one called me today. So I mean, that would indicate that they just assumed that that's good. But they have it for that's... 10 WWE wrestlers who took personal offense. To I, I know people are still not really rocking with Rick with, you know, things that have came out as a as a late of this year, as a reason of this year. But uh, that's just, um, yeah, that's not what's up. Like. That's, yo, bro, that's, I don't even remember that segment, but that's kind of, that's scummy. I, I I wouldn't even want to say that. And it's, it's interesting because in WWE, if you don't want to do certain things and you don't have that type of political power in the back, they'll start de-pushing you. They'll start having you in, they'll start booking you in awful matches and situations where you look bad where your character takes a nosedive on television they'll do that wwe has been known to do that oh Yo, if you don't want to play ball fine we'll just make it to the point where no one will actually see you on tv or even care about you like that so that that last one despite what rick flair has done in the past that's still kind of scummy in my personal opinion so comment down below let me know what uh segment from this video kind of uh i guess you could say disturbed you the most or shocked you the most me the rick flair segment that that's come on bro they could have done anything else to spark up a, a brawl that's kind of that's it's kind of messed up in my personal opinion but i appreciate all the love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace